It's the nation's favourite antiques experts. With £200 each. I like, I like, I like. A classic car <laughs> and a gold scar Britain for antiques. The aim? To make the biggest profit at auction, but it's no mean feat. There'll be worthy winners and valiant losers. It's fine. So, will it be the high road to glory? <laughs> A slow road to disaster. Pull out the ignition. This is the Antiques Road Trip. Yeah. A very good morning to road trip recruit Arusha Rue Irvin and a somewhat more experienced Philip Phil Serrell. What a glorious day this is, isn't it? Beautiful. I have to say, though, my fingers are a little bit frosty, but it's worth it. Yes, our early birds are out to bag yet more bargains, having made quite an impression at the first auction of their trip. Oops, trip. Sold 480. Done. Picking up hundreds between them. You showed a newbie how it was done. The newbie made a profit on every single lot. But that means... And the, and the oldie <laughs> didn't. Do you know he's not wrong? Because our Rua dealer from Scotland is as canny as they come. 15th of So hot to haggle that she got her boots for a song, because they're both right feet. <laughs> they kind of walk a little bit wonky, but no one's noticed. While Phil only walks wonky when he trips up over his beloved pet pooch. Daffy. And he's an auctioneer from Worcester, and he clearly knows his stuff. German, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know you know? Yes, yeah, it's Germany on the bottom. Oh, OK, all right, fine. The way he tells them. And don't forget the 1976 Triumph Stag. Your man handling Rudolph very well. Well, that's what they call him. Rue is on the up, increasing her £200 stake to £300.94p. While the Silver Fox has done even better, growing his £200 to a very healthy £538.74. I can not tell you, I was so proud of you. Thank you. So am I still in the dark horse now, or have I come out of the stables? Yes, nags, stags, and of course dogs. Woof, woof, eh? We've had the lot. After beginning back in Brimfield, Herefordshire, our pair will point Rudolph towards the Midlands, hitting the north and Yorkshire, and then plunging back down to London before motoring west to the Cotswolds and a final destination on the edge of the Forest of Dean at Newant in Gloucestershire. Today's busy schedule concludes at an auction in the fair city of Sheffield, but commences in the county town of Northamptonshire. A fascinating place with bags of history, but surely the one key fact everyone should know is that Northampton was the birthplace of legendary, laconic DJ and celebrity road tripper, Whispering Bob Harris. Oh yes. And having dropped her companion off, Rue's going solo. Nice. This is absolutely my kind of shop. It's a treasure trove. Well, let us once more a rummaging go. Glass or Art Nouveau, I wonder? Yes. I like, I like, I like. That's good, that's good, that's good. It's seeing here Art Nouveau brass and copper vase, £30. Oh. Righty. Uh, you think I'll get kicked out of the shop? I'm glad it's not glass. <laughs> I love the fact that it's made in copper. That was more of a material used in the arts and crafts era, which was sort of 1880 to 1900. But Art Nouveau overlapped by 10 years, so that you'll get a lot of similar styles. So this is almost Art Nouveau in an art, arts and crafts material. And the price is not too bad either. Yep, £30. That's on the short list. Mm. Aye, aye. Look what Ruth found. It's a glass. I don't often buy glasses, do I? Fast becoming her signature purchase. This, I would say, is late 1800s. The only problem is it's got a couple of chips, which I don't mind so much. And the reason I don't mind is because it's Quite. Time to talk to proprietor Linda. Linda? 
what could you do on the vase? It's up at 30? 15. Could you do 15 for the two? I think so. Yeah? Yeah. Brilliant. OK, well, let's shake on that. Brilliant. Thank you so That's much, okay. Linda. Brilliant. Cool, that was quick work. Thank you, you so much. much. I appreciate that. Don't forget you're on Team Roo. Whereas I am a bulwark of impartiality. Booty in her boot. It's time to find out what Phil's up to. Having been deposited a little earlier in nearby Kettering, which was known for its once thriving boot and shoe factories. Kettering, in Victorian times, was also something of a hotbed of religious non-conformism with many of her young preachers keen to spread the word throughout the empire, including one local hero who was instrumental in the abolition of slavery. Delia, how are you all right? You are going to tell me all about one of Kettering's many famous sons, aren't you? I am, yes, William Nibb. Would you like to come inside? Oh, I'd love to. Although famous men like William Wilberforce were justly lauded for the passing of the Slave Trade Act of 1807... There we go. Thank you. Light, it was Nib, the son of a humble Kettering tailor, who was arguably the key figure in finally abolishing it throughout Britain's colonies, thanks to his Baptist missionary work in Jamaica. When he got there, he found out the truth of what, what the situation was, and he absolutely hated what he saw. Mm. So he really rocked the boat then, didn't he? Oh, he rocked the boat a lot. Even from the beginning, he became one of the most influential of the, the missionaries. I mean, he doesn't look like a, a fighter, but he was a very, very powerful orator, and that was what affected people. Are, are these his words here? They are, yes. Can I read them? They're yeah, quite powerful, sorry. aren't they? Very, yes. Yeah. The cursed blast of slavery has, like a pestilence, withered almost every moral bloom. I feel a burning hatred against it and look upon it as one of the most odious monsters that ever disgraced the earth. That's powerful stuff, isn't it? Very powerful, yes. What on earth is that? Well, this is uh, a slave neck iron and it would have been used like this to prevent slaves from escaping. It's just barbaric, isn't it? In 1831, the Jamaican slaves bravely organised a strike which was soon cruelly and violently suppressed by the colonists. The revolt led by Samuel Sharp, who was both slave and Baptist preacher, was a key moment in the history of the struggle. The plantation owners definitely thought that the, the missionaries were behind it all. They burnt down a lot of the chapels, imprisoned several of the, the missionaries, including Nib. He was actually threatened uh, with murder. It was decided that Nib should travel to Britain to reveal the truth about slavery. And during 1832, he toured England and Scotland, speaking at public meetings. I was forced from the den of infamy and from a gloomy prison, with my congregation scattered, many of the members of my church murdered, and multitudes of the faithful lashed. He was a wordsmith, wasn't he? Oh, definitely. The most powerful words I think I've ever read. He was called to report to Parliament, and of the 500-page report, 60 pages were his evidence. So he was absolutely instrumental. The act that would abolish slavery in the British Empire was finally passed in 1834, enabling Nib to return and help newly emancipated slaves to buy land in Jamaica. That there is Kettering. Oh, yeah, there's Kettering just yeah, there. Yeah, Kettering's there. He named Burnham Trelawney. Well. Trelawney is another one. Manchester. Yeah. Yes, a lot of English names there. There, he's a national hero, the first white man to receive the Jamaican Order of Merit. While back in his hometown, the Kettering coat of arms also gives Nib his due. Quite right. Meanwhile, down in Northampton, town motto, peace is stronger than a fortress, Rue is about to lay siege to another shop. Look at this layout, it's just garden sheds, crammed full of antiques and collectibles. It's a real rummager's paradise. You could also call it beach combing. There are 
of 64 traders represented within the confines of this establishment. No wonder they have a TARDIS outside. Fortunately, Boss Steve, not him, can do the deals. Did you want this one first? Uh, yeah, if I could, thank you. 1932. So right in the middle of the Art Deco era. Yeah. I can imagine 1932, some wild Art Deco jazz party. I'd vote for them. Ticket price 90. Can I have a look at this brooch as well? <laughs> so this says, as found. So I'm looking for, is there any damage on this? With marker seat, because it's that lovely smoky grey colour, yeah. you almost can't tell if there's one missing. No. Because it's the same colour as the metal. And ooh, there is. There's one missing there, which might not be a deal breaker. So I'm going to put this here for now. That one's £38. There's yet more to see, though. Now, see, that would make a lovely set of a button hook and a shoehorn together. They've got that um, Art Nouveau sort of swirl to it. Yeah. Could potentially be of interest. I like the idea yeah. of having, uh, you know, a little set. So <coughs> these are the three items that I'm sort of interested in. Yeah. I especially love the Taza and the brooch. Could you keep these to the side for me? But as rude a part... Bye. For sheds anew, Phil's wound up in an eerily similar spot, just outside Kettering at Great Cransley. This used to be a chicken farm, apparently, with a slightly low-key approach to signage. Hello. Hello, hello. Oh, you must be Brian. Hello. Philip, how are you? Nice to see you. Yeah, I get everywhere. <laughs> I'll tell you what, this <laughs> is a little hidden yeah. gem, isn't it? Nicely described, Phil. This barn seems to be home to what was once the staple trade of the antiques business, brown furniture. Do you know what? You cannot be a furkle. And I haven't had a good little... Oops. It's OK. It's just the winder. Thank the Lord for that. I wonder if Phil, with his recently acquired fortune, will be tempted to splash out in here. Look at that. That's a bit of old metalware. This is a 19th century eel spear. So eels, elvers, they were a delicacy. And this would have been on a fairly long, probably ash, shaft. And you would have stood over the river. And as your elvers and eels swam in a swarm or whatever the plural of a flock of elvers is, you just spear them with this. So this is an eel spear. And you know what? People still eat jellied eels today. I think that's such a cool thing. I'm going to take that with me. And if Brian doesn't do me a deal, I'm, going to, I'm just going to batter him. No, I wouldn't do that. He's a lovely man, isn't he? Yes, leave him alone. Now, what about Dr. Rue on Planet Northampton? Allons-y. Yeah. I do like this. This is a um, box silver set, shoe worn and button hook. In its original case, which increases the value. Steve? Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Exactly matching design, and both are 1909 Birmingham, so you know they're by the same maker, and that is the um, original box, which has definitely been loved, but the main thing is it's been used, and you can actually see a bit of wear oh, along yeah. there. £27 on the ticket. I think it's now reserved. Can I put this on my table of contemplation? Brilliant. I'm going to carry on browsing, and I'll see you soon, Steve. Yes, well, you're welcome. Will. Thank you. Down on the farm, Phil's consulting Brian. Is that a cut-down cabinet? No, it's a desk. It's oh, I it's see. A lady's desk. It's in Rosewood, isn't it? Yeah. These open out. That folds out there. Hardly used. Look at that. A bit like me. <laughs> How much is that? Oh, well, five seventy-five. Mm. Moving on then. I like this, Brian. Yeah. That's a really good late Georgian, yeah. what, 1820 mahogany breakfast yeah. table. Yeah. The thing is, you see, is that that 20 years ago was between a thousand and two thousand pounds, wasn't yeah, it? That's right. Yeah. And now you can not far off take a naught off it, really. Mind your fork, Phil. So you've got a mahogany yeah. breakfast table. Mm. That will seat six people, yeah, two, two, and yeah. two. 
And the joy of this is for someone who's got a flat or a small home, when you're not using it, you just bang it up like that. Great. And there we go. Is he about to table a bid? <laughs> Can I bid you 150 quid for it? No, that's too low. Go on, then. How much would you take for it? Well, be quiet, so I think 250. Could we do a deal for that and for this eel spear? 230, then. Did you say 210? 230. Yeah, no, tooth is dirty. <laughs> Can I bid you 210 for the two? Because I think I've got to try and make a profit on them. All right. Would that do it? Yes, yes, that'll do it. Go on, you're a gentleman. Thank you very much indeed. So, £180 for the table and 30 for the eel spear. Although you might want to take care with that one. Back in Northampton, Rue's table of contemplation now groans with the addition of another Marcus Eat brooch and a silver sugar sifter. Let the sweet talking commence. So let's start with this then, the, um, the set. It's got quite a few dints. What could you do on that for me? I think we can get rid of the seven. Make it 20? Yeah. Could you do 18? Let's well, go 18. Even, yeah, yeah, 18. Yeah, Thank you, good. Steve. Brilliant. Yeah, OK. Well. Round two. This brooch, what could you do on this? I could do 12 on that. OK, and this one? Well, he's got 38 on it. We'll take a 10 off that, mate. That's 28. So that would be 40 for the two. Could you do the two for 35? Uh, could you do 35 on them? I oh, would do 35 on them. Yeah, thank yeah. you. You are. You're welcome. You're a star. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> OK, so 18. 18. And 35. What could the sugar sifter be? Ticket price, 85 pounds. 65. 65, OK. OK. And what could the silver bowl be? 60 would be the best on that. That's decoratively more beautiful. So that would take it up to... Um, you said 60? Yeah. 53, which would be 113. We'll let her make that 12, because I don't like 13. Could we do 110 for the three and clear you some space on the shelves? Yeah, and then we're both safe. Yeah? OK, brilliant. 110, perfect. Thank you so much, Steve. No, you're welcome. Crikey, that was a deal and a half. 80, 90, 100. I feel like a banker. 110. All sorted? And not a moment too soon, either. Look out. Ah! <laughs> ah! How are you doing? Yeah, pretty good, you. Good. I thought I'd get here early, scope the place out, get all the good stuff before you can. Story of my life, that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'd better go see if I can find something, haven't I? Well, the cupboard's hardly bare, Phil. They are glass knotted fishing floats. And they're just really good decorators things. They're priced up at £85 a piece. You'd have to get them a half price, really. You've got to think who the end buyer is. And, and you're not going to sell these to someone who collects Japanese fishing floats. But you are going to sell them to a decorator who either wants to decorate a commercial premises or they're going to want to decorate their home. I think I might need to give Steve a call. Steve must be a trifle fatigued by now. I quite like these these floats. Why are they Japanese, do you think? They were marked up at the auction as Japanese, so I think the lads are taking that as the providence of them. OK. Wherever they're from, I think Phil wants them. Could you tell me what your very best price is on the pair? I, I can do throw one in. So if you buy one, you can have the other one. A bog off, then? So it's £85 the two? Yeah. Go on, then. They'll go very nicely with his eel spear. Northampton's King Neptune. <laughs> yep, now that's certainly been a busy day. It's fun spending money, isn't it? Oh, it is. Nighty night, you two. Now, who loves the 70s? Phil does. This is from the era of flared trousers, platform yes. shoes. I wasn't born until 1980. I want to talk about something else now. I don't want to talk about that anymore. Well, all right, then. 
Yesterday, Phil picked up a Georgian mahogany table, some glass fishing floats and an eel spear. Oh, I'm gonna have a good little pool. <laughs> Leaving him almost 250 still in his kitty. Very pretty. While Arusha was also very active, acquiring two Marcusy brooches, a button hook and shoehorn set, an Art Nouveau vase, a Georgian glass and a silver taxa. Can I put this on my table of contemplation? But she still does have over £175 for any further purchases today. And it's a special day too. Happy birthday, Mr. Sarrell. Happy birthday to you. That's very, very good. Sometimes, Mr. President, it's worthwhile getting old. <laughs> Later, they'll be heading up to Yorkshire for an auction in Sheffield. But their first stop on Phil's birthday is on the outskirts of Coventry, where Triumph stags were once made. Ben, Ben, Ben! And please, don't feed the animals. Hi there, are you Charles? Oh, good morning, yes. Hi, Rue, nice to meet you. Hi, Rue, welcome to Green's Home and Garden. Thank you. There are a lot of actual antiques in this centre, but there's plenty else besides. You could very easily get lost in here such as contemporary, reproduction and vintage. Take a look at this light. I absolutely love this. It's an original converted bullfinch spotlight with the tripod legs. The thing that's making me a bit sad, this dangling piece of paper, because I would, I would take this in a heartbeat. It's not a bad price, it's £295, but it's just too rich for me. Sounds like her purchases today may be nothing like yesterday's lot, then. What I'm looking for is something big, different, a talking piece and quite quirky. And here's just the chap. Oh, oh, oh. Do you know, it was in Coventry, for the film The Italian Job, that they drove the minutes round and round the drains. There's not many people know that. It's like stars in their eyes round here. Our birthday boy's shop is also in the motor city of Coventry. Hi, Phil. Gordon, how are you? Good. Welcome to Cat in the Hat. Thank you. You've got some stuff in here, haven't you? Oh, my word. I've got to tell you, I just love that car. Its value is about £2,000. So, so you wouldn't take 200 quid for it? We wouldn't take 200 quid. Oh, nice try. He's in the mood today, though. If, if I need your help, can I just give you a... You can. Is that all right? I'll come running. OK, fine. Gordon, I'm just testing. Nothing's happened. Give him a tinkle. Come on, Phil. You've turned 32 now, after all. You should be able to look after yourself. I always think it pays in a shop like this to go and look for stuff that's sort of hidden away. And there's an old wheelbarrow here, probably French. Late 19th, early 20th century. But that's a great thing for someone who uses a, a shop display. Um, imagine that in a florist full of flowers. Or even, you know, take it home in your garden. Make a great feature piece. There's no price on it, so it's either just come in or it's been here for some time and he might just want to shift it. Might be time to go and find the old Gordon Bell. For whom it tolls, eh? Meanwhile, elsewhere, Rue's debating whether or not to have or not a yacht. I absolutely love this boat. It's really, really cool. It's a large pond yacht and they're so collectible. Seems to be in good working order. A little bit of damage here on the sails, but it's obviously sailed the seven seas. Uh, or quite a few ponds. £95. Could actually be one for consideration. So let's weigh anchor with Captain Charles and talk pieces of eight. We're not 15 off? 15. Should make it 80. Could you do this for 60? And I would take it off your hands and free up a lot of shelf space. <laughs> yes, we could do 60. 60? Yeah, we'll do 60. OK. So, with everything ship shape. I'm off to find a pond. How's her mate? Over at the cat in the hat. Oh, look, the Gordon summoner. Oh, that's nice. These are drug jars, and, and those are really, really cool. And this would have had anisome viridis in there. Now, I don't know for sure, but I think that's probably aniseed. And aniseed in the 19th century 
was seen as a cure for how can I put this? Let me give you a clue. Mm. Windy bum. Touch of flatulence. <coughs> I really like these. I've got to see how much they are. Fifty-two pounds each. That is not cheap. Let me get the old ding dong. Strangely. Well done, Gordon. Rue's choice was also wind related. <laughs> well, I like these two. Yeah. Which aren't a pair. They're no. French. Yeah. Um, and you've got a wheelbarrow downstairs, a green painted one, which I couldn't really see. Is yeah. that all up together? Yeah, yeah, it's all together. Works. Nice, nice thing. And I couldn't find a price ticket on it, so I thought it might have been free. Not free. The oh. price ticket is 130. Hell's but I'm sure there's bells a good bit of room. Buckets or what's it? What's your very best price on the wheelbarrow? Best price on the wheelbarrow, yeah. 70 pounds. Okay, and what's the very best price on that drug jar? On that one, 35. And on that one? Same, 35. But the pair? Yeah. 60 quid. 50 quid with the wheelbarrow. I could do 50 quid without the wheelbarrow. Yeah. That's Just okay. on those two. That's fine. Is that all right? Yeah. So I'm going to buy those two. Lovely. I'll shut okay. your hand on 50. So, with two swift jars, excuse me, fill the parts. Oh, I say, quite effective. While his fellow road tripper, with more serious intent, has travelled to the centre of Coventry, justly famous in the 20th century for its motor cars, the city once specialised in a very different product. And Ruse come to meet Hugh Jones from the Herbert Museum to learn more. This is a jacquard loom, making the ribbon that Coventry once produced in vast quantities. By the mid-1800s, almost half the city's population was employed in the silk industry. And one prominent local weaver was Thomas Stevens. He was born in Fosil, which is just on the outskirts of Coventry. Mm -hmm. um, by the age of 26, he had his own ribbon weaving factory. Stevens was a great advocate of the futuristic French loom, which was able to produce complex, beautiful designs with great speed and efficiency. The important part of it are these punched cards, which you can see up there, mm -hmm. and they contain a program of the pattern. So they would control how the loom worked and how it produced the, the pattern at the end of it. It almost reminds you of a, a music box. Yes, and it was also picked up and used in calculating machines in the 20th century, and those developed into computers. So you could see this as the forerunner of the computer programme. But by 1860, just a few years after Stevens had opened his first mill, Coventry's most important industry had fallen on hard times. The government lifted import duties on French silks, okay. and the French were the main competitors, so it meant that their ribbons were coming into the country cheaper than the Coventry ribbons. And there was also a slight change in fashion as well, so ribbons were actually less popular. So lots of manufacturers w went bankrupt, lots of ribbon weavers were thrown out of work. Thomas Stevens' business survived, however, because he put his jacquard looms to an entirely new use. Manufacturing the woven cloth labels we know today and collectible silk pictures he called Stephen Graphs. You actually feel like we're going behind the scenes. Ruse about to view a unique collection of Stephen Graphs, which was miraculously removed from the factory before it was destroyed during World War II. Thank goodness. It contains an example of almost everything that the company produced. They started off by doing these bookmarkers, mm -hmm. um, which they started weaving in 1862. There's hundreds of different examples. Look at the work in this. From a glance, you would think that this was ink. They are woven on uh, jacquard looms. So he also did portraits? Yeah, some of them are yeah, sort of nationally more well-known, like, say, John Knox and Wesley. And then there's this one which features the um, Prince of Wales, as he then was, who later became King Edward VII. Very dashing chap. <laughs> <laughs> well, at that time, I think he was, yes. <laughs> a lot of people would never have seen a likeness of these people. I mean, newspapers didn't really have photographs in them. Often, this was the only way people might see some of these likenesses. Yeah, yeah. But they are very, very realistic. Shrewdly, Stevens kept prices modest and marketed his designs as bookmarks, greeting cards and framed works of art eventually producing hundreds of Stephen graphs representing all aspects of Victorian life, both in Britain and abroad. We've got a series of um, 
princes and dukes and emperors in Germany produced particularly for the European market. These are the only examples that we know of are the ones in, in this album, so this is, this is where it becomes really rare. The inventor of the Stephen Graf passed away in 1888, but his highly collectible little legacies can still be found today. Just remember to keep them out of the sunlight. It seems as if just about every place we've been to recently has boasted a famous sun. Happy days. Be they industrialists, preachers, DJs or cars. Well, now Phil's on his way to the town of Stratford-upon-Avon, along with an estimated two and a half million other visitors every year. Yep, he's the reason they're here. Rhymes with eel spear, Phil. So, what's it to be? Much ado about nothing, or all's well that ends well? Good to see you, how's tricks? Lovely, thank you. Yeah. Happy, happy birthday. He is popular today. I want you to just show me something that's hidden away, no one's seen, that's fresh to the market, that you think I will do well at at auction. And I tell you what, I'm not even going to negotiate with you on the price. You tell me what your best price you can do it is, I'm either buy it or I won't. Just a second, I'll go and get you something. Really? Yep. I've got you something here. In Sue's storeroom, I say. What have you got there? Oh, look at those. Oh, that is brilliant. That is just fantastic. And he's got some friends as well. 1950s, the lady that brought them in this morning yeah. said that they were her own toys. But these are just lovely. Oh, I love the duck as well. Look at the duck. Well, do act your age, Phil. Oh. Do you know what, I think I must be, it, it is my birthday, but I think I must be getting very, very soft in my old age because I absolutely love these. Go on. Oh, look at him, a squiggy. Oh, look at that. What's the best price? Yes, it's your birthday. Yeah. And I want you to make some money. Yeah. How does 35 sound for That them? sounds fantastic, and I'll give you some money now. Uh, well, brevity is the soul of wit. Oh, they're lovely. I think he's going quackers. Second childhood. Buying done. Next, the auction tomorrow. But is Brew ahead of the game? We're going to Sheffield. Sheffield's an assay office. So you're buying your silver for Sheffield. Mm -hmm. And what have I bought for Sheffield? But then again, it could go the other way. There could be so much silver in Sheffield that they just don't want any more. Good point. Well made. Now time for some shut-eye. Night-night, you two. Sleep well. Welcome to Sheffield, the city built on seven hills, just like Rome. Well, sort of. Nervous? Excited. <laughs> Very excited. What about you? Oh, I'm worried about my table. If it's a good furniture sale, I could be all right. After kicking off in Northampton and seeing a fair bit of the West Midlands, Rue and Phil have headed north towards the Steel City. Home to the Sheffield Auction Gallery, the region's oldest auctioneers and with internet bidding. Hey, how are you? I'm good. Put it there, partner. I tell you what I could do with a hand. <laughs> <laughs> Phil parted with £380 for five auction lots. And this has the power to tell your fortune. Is there anything about my wallet on there? Whilst Arusha spent just 185 also on five lots. So let's share our hopes and fears. That's absolutely fantastic. I'm not sure how far Sheffield is from the water, but you know what? I think that's going to do quite well. I think this will be a risk for Phil. I hope, I hope it pays off for him, but I don't think it will. It's lovely, but brown furniture is just not in fashion anymore. Time for the sage thoughts of auctioneer Robert Lee. The two glass fishing floats. Look at the size of them out, they're massive. They'll be able to keep some nets up. 40 to 60 pounds, surely. The Tazza, it's a lovely little piece, it's nice, it's dainty, it's beautifully pierced, and it's silver. Yeah, I like the plush toys. They're nice and fluffy, aren't they? You're tempted to say, ah. Everyone's gone daft. Here we go. So, what's up first? I'm up first. <laughs> yep, Ruse, first bit of silver, the Tazza. Forced to start the bidding on commission at £30, 35 we're after. 35 it must be elsewhere, 40 with me, 45 we're after. You're out there, therein I'm out. Who's on 50? 45 bid on the internet, must be £50 now. 45 is your bid on the internet, 50 bid, 55 bid, 60 please. Come 
55 speed on the internet must be 60 pounds to progress. And else want this item? Any advance, it's gonna sell. One last look, it's going on the internet, 55 pound, going, going. Sold, internet vinyl was double seven. Rue's very first road trip loss. She'll get used to it, Phil has. <laughs> Listen, I'm gonna show you what a loss is in a minute. <laughs> Any eel viewers should look away now. Phil Spear. 22 we're after, 22 bid on the internet, 25 it's got me now, 22 bid, 25 it must be. Good quirky item. Anybody else for 25? 25 new bid, 28 we're after, 28, 30 sir. 30 in the room, 35 we're after. Anybody else for 35? Thought this would go on, it's gonna sell. One last look, on my left at 30 pounds. Have we finished? <sighs> That's your answer. Even, which is good. Well, I didn't. I lost money after commission. So close to an actual profit, though. <laughs> what about Rue's silver shoe paraphernalia? Must start these at 12, 15, please. 15 for them. 12 with me, cheaply. Got to be 15 to move on. 15, 18, 20 now. £20 with the lady, top of the shop. 22 I'm after. 20 only bid. Anybody else for 22? New bid. 25, madam. No. Anybody else for 25? 22 with a gentleman here. Anybody else for 25? They've got to sell at 22. Hammer's dropping at £22. Any advance? Net bid at £15. They've got to sell at £15 Hey, at long last profits, things are looking up. I'm going to show you what tears really are. Oh. Now, the auctioneer was very keen on these salty items. They float, but can they fly? 45 bid on the internet. 50 we're after. 45 bid on the internet. 50 pound, new bid. 55 a need. You're out, letters. 55, 60, sir. 60 in the room, 65 we're after. 70, sir. 70 in the room, 75 we're after. 80, sir. 75, uh, 40 each. 75 bid on the internet. His Anybody else for 80? With rope chucked in. Oh, I kind of settle for this. On the internet, NBS for £80. One last look, they're going to sell. On the internet, yeah, 75 Fair see. warning at £75. Going, going. I just lost about 18 quid, quid, and I'm feeling quite, <laughs> you know, quite pucker about it, really. That's the spirit, Phil. Worst things can happen at sea. It's all wrong. Shouldn't we be making money? That is the theory. Perhaps Rue's Ponjot can catch a fair wind. It's a beauty, isn't it? What a beauty. Launch it at £25. 28, please. 28 bid. 30 we're after. 28 bid on the internet. Must be 30 now to progress. I feel sick, I feel sick. Must be 30 now. 28 only bid. £30 there. Need 35 elsewhere. Barely left the port. 30 bid on my left. It needs to be 35. Everybody else coming in. Any advances? Go in. Bit quicker, Lucy. What fair warning. On my left, standing at £30. Have we done? I'm really saddened by that. I thought it would have made about four to five. No, I thought it made more. I thought you had money back. Me too. Still, a bit to go, though. Mind you, I'm coming to the conclusion. What do I know? Aha! So cute. Can these fluffy little creatures cheer up our fill? 40 bid on commission. 45, it must be now. 45, 50, 5, 60, 5, 60 bid on commission. Any bills coming in? They're gonna go. Fair warning on the commissions at sixty pounds. Sixteen quid a piece is not a lot of money, is it? It's a profit, Phil. Your first. They did you proud. Looks like you might hold on to that. Big so, so of yours. Yes, and this ruse pair of Marcus Heat brooches are what Sheffield craves. Ten for the two to kick us off. Ten bid, twelve, please. Twelve bid, fifteen. We're after. You're out. Fifteen, eighteen, madam. 18 in the room, 20 please. 22, madam. 22 in the room, 25 we're after. 22 bid, Lady Central holds it. Got to 25 elsewhere. Is that a bid, sir? 25, new bid, 28. 25 gentlemen here's in. Must be 28 now. Any, any advance for the two at 25? One last look. Fair warning at 20, 28, new bid. Got to be 30. One last look. Central bid at 28 pound. Going, going. Hammers down, by a was. Three, one. Oh, it happens, Rue. Hang on in there. I'm going to need a strong cup of tea after this. Or maybe one of Dr. Phil's remedies. His drug jars are next. I'm feeling windy. 20, you should open me bid. 22, oh, please. The real God. 22, 22 there. 25, I'm after. 25, 28, 30, 35, 
30 bid, third row. Anybody else for 35? 30 bid so far for the two. 35, 40. 35 only for the two. They're gonna sell. One last look. All the now we at 35. <laughs> hey, that's my catchphrase. Oh, lordy. 22, oh, that's not 22, bad. 22 bid, 25 <laughs> Now you're patronising. That's not a nice trade move. Last chance for the novice. Her Art Deco vase and Georgian glass must surely have a good chance, though, mustn't they? Like that was a lot of weight to it. Together with that late Georgian rubber in glass. Ten pounds is your only bid. Twelve there, fifteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two bid on the internet, twenty-five in the room, twenty-eight I'm after. You're off to the races. Twenty-eight, thirty, sir, thirty in the room, thirty-five I'm after. after thirty-five, forty, sir, thirty-five bid on the internet, forty new bid well done, in the room, forty-five we're after, fifty, sir, fifty in the room, fifty-five we're after. Lovely bars. Fifty in the room, fifty-five, sixty, sir, sixty in the room, sixty-five we're after. Well 70, sir. 70 in the room. 75, we're after. Your outletters, they're in at 75. 80, sir. 80 in the room. 85, we're after. Well done, you. I didn't see that. 90, sir. 90 in the room. 95, we're after. Get your bids in quicker. 95, they're in. 100, sir. 100 in the room. 110, we're after. Well done. 110, you. it must be internetters. Got to be 110. Get your bid in quicker, lose it. Any advance. Young man holds it. 100 pounds. Going, going. Well done, you. It's well done you. Must be mm -hmm. All her losses forgotten. Now she's back in the black. We could be neck and neck. This will be interesting. Oh, it will. Because with perfect timing, here's Phil's last lot and his biggest gamble. £50 for it. £50 Ouch. for it to kick us off. 65, 65 on my left, 70 I'm after, 65 only bid. Must be 70 pounds to that continue. Is absolutely for nothing. Feel like we've bought one of the legs. One my left at 65 pounds, gentlemen at 65, I'm just gonna drop. Have we finished at 65? Ouch. That is the cheapest breakfast table I've ever Price, seen. Sir. Oh, it's a bargain, all right. Scant consolation for our Phil. I've aged about ten years. You make it look so uh, easy, though. Well, what, losing money? It's just a dream. Come on, let's go and see who's won. Absolutely. Bill started out with £538.74, pence, but after costs, he made a loss of £162.70p, so he has £376.04 and four pence to spend next time. While Rue began with £300.94p, made a tiny profit after costs of £7.70. So she has £308.64p. And, of course, the laurels from today's auction, although Phil is still out in front overall. Ooh. Well... I'm done in. That was a roller coaster, wasn't it? <laughs> I could lift my shoulders. Onward and upward. Do you know what? Tomorrow's another day. More money to be made. Or lost.